Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Well Adapt is Ireland's global centre of excellence for digital content. Recently awarded €50 million in additional funding, it is a world-leading multi-institutional research centre. ADAPT's cutting-edge technologies enable businesses in all sectors to analyse, personalise and deliver content more effectively to drive engagement, reach and revenue. Professor Andy Way is the Deputy Director of the ADAPT Centre and he joins me now. Andy, start by providing us with an insight into your own career. Yeah, OK. Uh, so I've, I've been in uh, DCU for 28 years, half my life now, as a professor in computing, um, teaching things like machine translation and natural language processing. Uh, and over the last 12 years or so, um, uh, we've been running large uh, research centres funded by SFI. Firstly, a centre called the Centre for Next Generation Localization, And then over the last four or five years, uh, the ADAPT Centre uh, for Digital um, Content Technology. Uh, my, my previous background, uh, my first degree was, was in French German and linguistics, and then I did a master's in computing, and uh, you know, I've been doing machine translation for about 30 years now, so it's a perfect marriage of the, of the languages, the linguistics, and the, uh, the computer science, so I've been very lucky to, to fall on my feet in this area. So provide us with an insight into the day-to-day work that you're completing to ADAPT. Okay, so I, I run um, the ADAPT Centre in DCU. So there are four university partners currently uh, on board. So I will be, you know, on, on a daily basis, talking to my own PhD students and postdocs about particular aspects of projects, um, looking at the finance of various operations, um, trying to plan for future uh, projects, uh, to talking to industry partners, trying to get them involved in, in new projects. Uh, that, that type of thing. So how are the centre's research activities funded? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good question. Uh, so ADAPT is primarily funded by Science Foundation Ireland. It's one of a number of centres that uh, address a particular concerns that the government has, has uh, uh, expressed an interest in uh, our, us putting together uh, world-class expertise in, in, in particular areas. Uh, so we're in the, the ICT space Uh, funded by SFI, trying to push the boundaries of digital content technologies and AI. So what we're trying to do there is empower the user to transform information uh, at ever-increasing speeds across language barriers and media technologies. And Andy, what breakthroughs have ADAPT achieved to date? Okay, well, in my specific area, you know, we work in machine translation. We're one of the leading machine translation uh, academic groups uh, worldwide uh, with about 25 researchers working on machine translation. We've been looking at a, a, a number of things, for example, that, uh, that you know, Google Translate that people might be familiar with uh, is not able to, um, to, to, to address to the extent that we can. So Google Translate is not very good at translating gender, for example. So where you have um, different gender in, 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 in a range of uh, foreign languages, Google Translate would, would pick one and likely pick the, the masculine gender, and that would annoy half of the, the population mm. straight away. Um, we, we can make sure that you know, sort of sentiment is, is translated uh, accurately in translation. So we found that Google Translate, for example, and other, other I'm not just picking on Google Translate here, other, other similar um, uh, generally applicable uh, MT systems, you know, can, when they translate, they, they might omit the translation of the word not, for example, which completely changes the truth value of the sentence. Um, you know, other things that uh, ADAPT is pushing the boundaries in uh, is in natural language processing, in uh, personalization. So, for example, you and I might input the same query into Google, um, but you might prefer to have yours read to you um, as a bit of a digest as while you're driving home after uh, a hard day's work, whereas I might prefer for that to be emailed to me or to be, you know, sent an, an SMS. So, um, you know, we're, we're looking at that image processing and video processing. We're able to repair old videos. Um, you know, if you look at an old movie from the 20s or the 30s, there's lots of you know, glitches on the screen. We're able to repair that. Um, we do things like, you know, uh, take old images and, and we can colorify those, the, those images. So a range of different things, um, you know, um, all in the, the, the digital content space. I know that ADAPT has already worked with eBay, Huawei and Microsoft on machine translation. Tell us about these projects and their various outcomes. Yeah, uh, so, so those, are, those are nice example uh, uh, projects. So, so with Huawei, for example, you know, what we did uh, was we built um, a system which enabled um, 
English speakers uh, to book a hotel room in China with, by only speaking English. Uh, and it enabled the Chinese hotelier to actually confirm various details about the, the hotel booking um, you know, by him uh, only speaking only speaking Chinese. So this was mediated by two machine translation systems, English to Chinese, Chinese to English. And with eBay, um, you know, uh, everybody will be familiar that, you know, with a with a, an, an eBay product description that you've, you know, you've, you've listed something on eBay and you, you associate an image with that. You take a photo of the, 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 the particular item that you're trying to sell. And what we found was that by using features from the associated image, we could better translate the eBay product description. So that was, that was a, a fascinating insight. Working with uh, Microsoft on um, automatic post-editing of machine translation output. So, the one thing that um, human post editors get frustrated at is is having to always fix the same errors from the from the machine translation system. So what we what we did with 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 Microsoft was to uh, actually construct a system which was able to learn from the edits that the the human post editors had had made, and have the uh, machine translation system itself learn those so that over time the user could see the benefit of interacting with the MT system so that they had fewer and fewer edits to make over time. So that was a nice win-win uh, situation. And Andy, in your opinion, what are the emerging trends in machine translation and is there a ceiling that it will reach? Yeah, well, like I say, you know, machine translation has never been as popular as it is today. And this is primarily due to um, a paradigm shift that we've seen over the last four or five years. So, so neural language processing has, has, has come in and the quality which emanates from those systems is really, really much better than the previous state-of-the-art systems that we had before. But it still makes mistakes. You know, machine translation is not a solved problem. Um, and, you know, often, you know, the, the, if it makes a mistake, you really have to inspect the output very, very sort of diligently to actually spot the mistakes that it makes. MT quality is undoubtedly improving. You know, for us as researchers, you know, we can see that. We look at the input, we look at the output, we compare it to a range of different systems, and we can see that the quality is improving. But, you know, it, there's no doubt that, you know, this will continue to improve because everybody is working on this same sort of neural machine translation paradigm today. But it will reach a ceiling, there's no doubt. I mean, lots of people talk to me, you know, from industry, hoping that I will say that at some point, you know, human translators will, will be redundant. But that, I, to me, that's never going to be the case. And do you expect that the ADAPT Research Centre will diversify into other areas of research in the future? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we've, we've, we have a, another proposal um, under review by Science Foundation Ireland at the moment. Um, we, we wrote a very large proposal and a summary of the four years that we had worked on ADAPT to date. Um, we then were reviewed by uh, an international panel convened by Science Foundation Ireland, and we're hoping for, for good news in the next month or so from SFI that we might be funded for phase two of ADAPT from 2021 to 26. What that will mean is increasing the, the size of ADAPT from about 250 people at the moment to, to, to 350 to 400 people going forward. Four new universities will, will come on board. And again, we will be reaching out into things like augmented reality, virtual reality, um, and a range of other new disciplines. We're, you know, moving more away from text towards sort of multimodal translation, looking at, um, you know, translation of, of images and, uh, and dialogues, as I mentioned before. Um, so, uh, you know, more and more queries have been in, 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 in input into Google and, and, uh, and Apple um, using things like Siri. You know, my kids will never, ever type a query into Google. They just talk to Siri. So voice is becoming more and more important. Speech recognition is becoming more and more important. And text is becoming less important. There's no doubt about it. Voice search is the future of web search. Now, just on the topic of virtual and augmented realities, what industries and sectors do you think will be most disrupted by those technologies? Yeah, well, we've done a few projects recently with, uh, with uh, some banking organizations, for example, so that they can visualize their data. So... Um, you know, uh, we, ha we have uh, people who put on a headset and they can visualize all, all sorts of, of, of data within the and, and patterns within the data with, within the banking sectors. We have a, a very nice project um, called Beyond 2022, uh, which is an, a, a virtual reality um, uh, demo at the moment, which is trying to reconstruct the, the, um, the, the library which burnt down uh, in, in 1922. 
So we've we're, we're able to to you know with a, a pair of you know virtual reality goggles put those on. People can navigate the space in the in the, the national archives at the time, and then actually you know see where particular you know books and uh, journals and things you know where they were actually physically located on the shelves. They can they can download those and have a look at them and read them and, and read about the people who were involved. Meet some of the people who were in in the in the archives at the time. So this is a fantastic um, space where you know we, we're were um you know involved in the sort of digital humanity space trying to make you know history real it's an absolutely fascinating project now finally andy in your opinion what does the future hold for artificial intelligence yeah that's a good question carl uh, i mean one of the things that you know i think people are starting to realize is that is that their data is is important so one of the things that we're working on in in adapt is is trustworthy ai you know where the user is in control but they and they can really trust the, the, the AI is being used on their behalf rather than on behalf of a, a large multinational organization who's just trying to monetize that data. So I think that's a big, uh, a, a big turn. I think we're, we're kind of on the cusp of that, uh, of that point. Um, and, you know, people will start to see themselves uh, as, as, as consumers of the content rather than their data being consumed by other organisations. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Professor Andy Way from the ADAPT Centre. And I'd like to thank Andy for providing us with an insight into their groundbreaking innovation in digital content. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast.